Welcome to the Lila Life Show. I'm your host, Linda Andrews, and you've tuned in to the right place to up-level in your life and business. Enjoy the show. Welcome to the Leela Life Show. I'm your host, Linda Andrews, and I'm happy to be with you right now. Today, I have some messages I want to share with you that are hopefully exactly what you need, and we will see. So a lot of the work that I do with my clients and that we do with our clients, you know, with, with our additional coaches here at legal life is to help people mitigate stress, to help them see clearly, to help them connect, connect to passion, vision, purpose, fulfillment. I heard this recently feel full or full fill (laughs) meant feel full, feeling full, right? Moving through life, looking to feel full uh, versus full fill. What's filling you up? Full. (laughs) Kind of fun with words. Um, Which reminds me of a time in my life where I felt so empty and I was using food to feel full. And this is just one of the many ways a person can try to feel full. What are some other ways? Alcohol could be one, maybe different drugs, uh, consumerism, materialism, technology. We see work addiction. uh, And then just even different emotional homes, say chaos, uh, distraction, uh, just these lower, lower energy spaces. So what in the world is going on? Isn't that a funny question? What in the world is going on? When we look outside for the answer of what in the world is going on, we are at the whim of all the possible answers of what in the world is going on. When we tune in, and last week I was talking a lot about embodiment and empowerment, um, we may find a different answer. So some of the things that I just want to start by saying and, and use this as your own litmus test of, huh, yeah, wow, okay, interesting, right? If anything is like, oh, I want to know more about that, know more about it. So let me tar- paint a, a, a dark picture for a moment, okay? Hang with me. We have our soils being depleted of nutrients, and uh, being ravaged by toxins and pesticides, similar to a lot of our water, which which connects us to pesticides. Uh, pesticides also in our food, the processed food with its own slew of maybe different chemicals, uh, the role of technology, both from a standpoint of EMFs coming out, out from the tech, like uh, the elect- electromagnetics of the tech, technology and also the information that we're receiving through the technology, which leads us into this cycle of consumerism and materialism. You know, I've heard this many times before, and I don't know why I keep buying these things. I've, I've done this. Uh, and, and some of these algorithms that are just so tapped in to you, maybe more than sometimes you even feel underlying conditions that people may not even know about, right? Uh, Known as comorbidities, uh, obesity at all time high, childhood obesity at all time high, uh, and and a control of ideas and media where, um, you know, do we really know where the ideas are coming from? This question that I think is really important is why do you think what you think? You know, sometimes we can hold so deeply to these thoughts and beliefs without looking under the hood and seeing what, who, when, where, why, how are these connected and coming through me? Is it uh, past trauma that has made a certain lens in which you see the world, which is where these ideas are coming from? Uh, Is it 
yeah, I, I want to keep that right there. Um, so a lot of these things, I, in my opinion, there's different parts of the brain, but one of them are connecting to your limbic hijack. So our, our thinking is not as sound as maybe it's been in other times in the world. For me, this thought can become very overwhelming because I think about leadership and I think about, um, oh man, if everybody has a limbic hijack, who the fuck knows what's going on, you know? And I think there is truth to that. And I think the overwhelm that can be a default mode for me uh, is easy to get into. And so when we ask this question, you know, am I in empowerment and embodiment, this, this brings this lens and mirror back inside and this control the controllables, you know, am I in, in my practice? Am I in my truth? Am I in my now moment? So contemplate this if it's interesting to you. Why do you think what you think? We've had a couple different episodes over time about death. You know, can we accept quote unquote death? I, I personally think that there's a part of us that dies every day. And so, and maybe all of us could die every day and then is being reborn every day. When you look at people with that experience, there's no preconceived motion, preconceived notions that come into the new moments, right? It's like fresh slate, fresh slate, fresh slate. Now that person can continue to make the same choices that would then lead to the, it seemingly being that same person. But if you give this sort of benefit of the doubt of, uh, you know, this person's a new, maybe a different experience. There may be little parts of that person that's getting to know themselves deeper and deeper and deeper each day. That's allowing them to show up newer and newer and newer and newer each day that your preconceived notions are holding them back to a version of themselves that they no longer are. I think that this is actually shifting so quickly that from a month ago till now, things could be changing. I personally within myself, I feel this happening so fast. It's sometimes like, whoa, who am I? Because the growth is so tremendous. Which leads to this question, can you feel free to live? Can I feel free to live? Can we feel free to live? Breathe that in for a moment. What does living in your moments mean to you every day? Every day, I say every day because every now it is every day, I go on a bike ride and I bike to the beach and back. And I do an experiment every day on this bike ride when I'm doing the bike ride. And I smile at everyone and I allow my heart center to extend as big, as bright, and as beautiful as I can in a moment. And I am not attached to the outcome, meaning like if someone doesn't smile back, now the rest of my rides broke or whatever, right? It's just like, it's feeling good. I'm feeling the vibe. I'm smiling. I say hi. And it's an experiment every time, right? Sometimes I see the same people. Sometimes I see different people. Sometimes I get completely ignored. And so what I'm managing during that experience is my state and the ability of myself to let my state be impacted by someone else, right? So for example, I'm being ignored on the bike ride by someone I just smiled to. I took the time to smile to and they're ignoring me and I'm like, what the fuck? And now I'm pissed for the rest of my ride. It's like these little practice moments. And so every day I get to be free to practice, practice living, practice living, also known as living. You know, how fully immersed in my moment can I be in every moment? If it's a scale of zero to 100, can I be fully in 100? Now, what needs to be made known clear in this moment is that that doesn't mean every moment's the same, right? Like, you're listening to your needs, you're listening to source or guidance or intuition. Every moment is going to be different. You living fully in every moment is going to look different. And I think the key here that's so important, can we feel free to live and listen? Listen, that internal guidance, that internal GPS, that God voice, that intuition, can you listen to that? And you listen to others, what's really going on? What's going on underneath the words, underneath what they may be telling you, 
right? So let's take an example of something extremely divisive that someone's saying. And there's a difference in theory between them saying it to you directly to your face versus them saying it on social media. But I think this example holds true for either space, because if they're saying it on social media or they're saying it to your face, what's underneath what they're saying? And if you can listen with this inner ear, this inner knowing, you may be able to pick up on something different than what's actually coming out of their mouth. And I would say nine times out of 10, this could actually be a lot of fear or disturbance. It makes me emotional because I can feel <laughs> this overwhelming sense of this going on in our world right now. There's a lot of people that are scared. So, you know, when you're listening with this space of compassion, joy, love, peace, understanding, you know, they're saying one thing and they're meaning another. And can you be there to hear? the deep hearing what's being said. You know, this is a big part of what coaching is about. We're listening, 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 listening for maybe what's being said, but also what's being said that's not being said through the energy or, or what's the energy of what's underneath what's being said. So this freedom to listen and live in the last piece, you know, can we make, can we sense me and live more freely? About a year and a half ago, I was wigging out I mentioned this before. And I talked to a girlfriend of mine and she introduced me to this concept of sense making. I then went on to uh, take a sense making one-on-one course, an avid follower of Daniel Schmachtenberger and Charles Eisenstein, where I'm uh, true believer that these are some of our greatest thinkers of our time and not because they are necessarily so special, but they unlock the genius that is available in all of us. I guess I do consider myself a genius as do I consider you one. It's just about how much we're tapping into that. And so this invitation to sense make, making sense of the world around us. This is not accepting everything as rote it is making sense of the world around us. When this is done from a space of connection to self, source, God, intuition, fill in your blank, and from a space of integrity and a, a space of empowerment, embodiment, making sense of the world and living more freely, living 100% in your now moment and making sense of the world and being in this practice. When are you not doing this? You're not doing this when it is just on autopilot. When it's autopilot. Well, I do that because that's why I do that. Well, why, right? You know, kids, they're gifted at this. I still tap into this as much as I can. I'm sure I annoy the shit out of people sometimes, but why, 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 but why, why? Why? I want to understand. For me personally, I can give you a thousand percent buy-in if I understand why and it makes sense to me. And this is this active practice of sense making. You know, a, an exercise that I like to do that also could be quite maddening for some is like, could the inverse of everything be true? And that could be just as true as everything else. It's like it loosens up the fixation of some of the other things that we're accepting as true. Can we make sense and live more freely? So here are some practical uh, invitations that you will hear regular because there's nothing that exciting going on. Uh, but what I think is the big difference is the engagement. Are you doing this or not? And where you're not is an invitation to do it. Nourishing yourself with food and water. Uh, you know, take this a step further. Can you engage with your local farmer? Can you get curious about their farming practices? What soil they're using? Our food is coming from somewhere. You may follow economics and geopolitics and be concerned about the supply chain, or you may not know what any of that means. 
either way, understanding what your local farmer's up to, what they're doing with their soil is a great practice to be engaged in. There could be a CSA, Community Shared Agriculture, where you could grow your own food, or you can also be purchasing food boxes boxes to work off of the box this that that month. Uh, you know, there's a lot more I could say about the food piece that I won't, maybe we'll have another future episode. And I know there's past episodes about this, but the point being (laughs) nourishing food and water, the water, uh, you know, whether you're getting glass bottled spring water delivered, glass bottled spring water delivered because you don't trust your local water source or you have a filtration system, something to be aware of is the plastics right? The plastics that are happening with your water, uh, meaning like if your water is traveled in plastic and it's especially been heated over a certain threshold, say, because it's hot (laughs) and there's going to be this off gassing of the plastic into the water known as leaching. And then your body is digesting this. It's going to be problematic for your system over time, right? So nourishing food and water, regular movement, movement. This could be walking. Okay. Let's get back to the basics. If you have hold up and have not been moving, start with walking, start with something that you love. Take five minutes to dance with your favorite song. I'm listening to that song. I got to be real. Sometimes I like to send my family, my favorite, uh, my favorite song. Cheryl Lynn, got to be real, throwback. Breathing. You know, if if I don't talk about this every show, I don't know what I'm doing. Inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth or nose, drawing that breath into your low abdomen, filling up your lungs, feeling your rib cage expand, feeling your chest expand and exhaling. Meditation, prayer, quality thoughts connection to source and belief system, regular check-in around values, priorities, and alignment, connection to self and others, and forgiveness. Forgiveness. This is for you. The forgiveness is for you. Meaning two things. One is you may actually have a lot of self forgiveness to be tapping into, which is amazing. Number two is when you are forgiving others, you you are reaping the benefits of that. Noticing stressors and mitigating them. What is adding more stress in your life and simplifying? You want to do a practice. This is a beautiful ongoing practice. One simple example that could be powerful to eliminate your life, is there a person that you find yourself in contention with regularly? I double dog dare you to be like an oak tree and just freaking root down into yourself and let whatever they're saying that could be provoking for you just move through you. And so I leave you with, aside from this little laundry list of really powerful check-ins, where do we go from here? What is possible? You've heard me say this, possibility dissolves problems that then no longer need to be solved. When we are focused on the problem, solving the problem, solving the problem, solving the problem, solving the problem. It's like we're pouring this energy into the problem. When we step into possibility, the problem solves itself. So this is like, you know, reverse. We're focusing on what would the desired outcome be? What's possible? Sometimes we're too stuck in connecting the possibility to the problem to do this backwards engineering to get from the problem to the new possibility. If you pour your heart, mind, and soul into the possibility, the problem will take care of itself. I cannot stress this enough. Notice where your problems are and ask yourself what could be possible. 
What is possible? What could be possible? And let your imagination run wild and ask yourself, what can I do today? You will be guided every time. I love you so much. I hope you got exactly what you need. Tune in again. We have some powerful interviews coming, feedback, topics, what you love. We, we want to hear it all. So reach out at office at lelalife.co. Shoot me a message directly, Linda at lelalife.co, uh, or feel free to engage on our social. Be well. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Leela Life Show. Be sure to share, like, and comment. Tune in next week. And if you're not already a member of the Leela Life Collective, you'll want to be. So take a look in the show notes and be sure you sign up today. Have a beautiful day.